is the TN Ready practice test for Integrated Math 2, question number 21, at least in 2019 it is. The question says, what is one solution to 2x squared minus 3x plus 3 equals 0? Now, first off, they want to know what one solution is, which means it's probably going to have more than one. This x squared would indicate that is the case. So enter your answer in the space provided. This is kind of a it's not particularly tricky, but you can save yourself a bunch of time if you just go in and do a little bit of a quick checkup before you even bother going into trying to factor it. A lot of students I've had in the past tend to go straight to factoring, but that's not always the best plan. When you see the word solution and it's a quadratic, it's essentially where the quadratic, when we say solution, it means where does it intersect with the x-x is what the x-intercepts. So that's what solution is defined as. There are situations in which the graph doesn't even go to that. Up here, for instance. There are still solutions, they're just not real numbers. So if I sort of flip this over like this, these values could still be considered solutions, it's just they aren't real, they're imaginary. So we're going to work with imaginary solutions here, most likely. I'm telling you that because I did a test before anything else, and I figured out that I didn't have to worry about trying to factor this or use um, any other method that would take me a bunch of time. So instead, I went straight to using the quadratic formula. But I'll show you why I did that first before I go into it. If my calculator will ever open, I will. There it is. Okay, so I went ahead, and it's a good idea if you, for you to do this as well, just to save yourself the effort. And when you do the minus, make sure it's the minus and not the negative sign, because it will end up giving you an error if you do it the other way. And there's the graph. And you see it's not touching the x-axis at all. It means it's imaginary. So instead of doing some other method, I would suggest you do one that you can get imaginary numbers with. And the easiest one for me, anyway, is just to use the um, quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Um, the value, the coefficient on x squared is... 2, so a's value is 2. The coefficient on x, the linear coefficient, is b is negative 3. Make sure you keep that negative. And your c value is your constant term, which is 3. So negative b, if it's negative, negative, you can do it this way if you want. Or you can say, well, if it's negative, negative, it's really positive, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to deal with plus or minus. B is negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 over 2 times 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 4 times 2 times 3. 4 times 2 is 8. Times 3 is 24. Over 4. Now, 9 minus 24 is negative 15. So I end up with 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 15 over 4. They are going to want this in simplest form. The good news is 15, the only, multi, the only uh, factors of 15 are 1 and 15 and 3 and 5, and none of those are squares. So you're actually kind of done as far as reducing this value. But remember, if you have a negative inside the square root, you just put the i to show it the imaginary solution. So 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 15 over 4. 3 and 4 don't reduce. There's not even any coefficient value outside the square root to reduce over here. So you're done as far as that's concerned. 
you have two choices. You could either write 3 plus i times the square root of 15 over 4, or you can do the same thing except instead of having this plus, you put minus. It only wants one solution. You don't put plus or minus because that would indicate that there's two solutions there, so just make sure that you give them the answer that they want. I saved a bunch of time on this question trying because normally I would go in and try to factor it, and it doesn't factor. So um, it would be in my best interest each time I have a find a solution question that's a quadratic that I go ahead and do a quick graph just to see if it's a calculator allowed section. Do a quick graph to see if it's actually going to have real solutions or it's going to have imaginary ones um, because it will save me a lot of time later. So that's it.